guys, Michael here, and welcome to the second video in the RC Hot Air Balloon Envelope Building Tips and Tricks series. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about patterns, as well as cutting, and then I'll give an intro into the materials you're going to need to start sewing. I'm not going to go specifically into how I sew balloons today, that'll be in the next video, but I will go over the sewing machine I use and some of the other tools that I think you should get to get prepared to start sewing your envelope. So let's get started. So let's talk a little bit more about patterns as we get started today. Like I stated in video one, I would suggest using the free Cameron Balloons pattern on their website. You can find that link in the video one description. It's for a 2,800 cubic foot, 80 meter or 80 meter cubed envelope. We talked a little bit about the materials I use to make my patterns last week, but I do want to discuss quickly the measurements that they provide on the Cameron website. They provide all of their measurements in millimeters. So you need to do a quick conversion that is shown here on the screen now to get those measurements into inches, if that's what you're comfortable with. You can certainly make the pattern using the millimeter unit scale, but if you're in America, you may be a little bit more comfortable with inches. Remember, take your time making your patterns and make sure that they look correct and each panel lines up with the panel above or below it before you start cutting. Now that we've summed up pattern making, let's get into cutting. There's a few materials I recommend for cutting. The first is these Frisker scissors. These are Frisker's razor sharp scissors. You can buy them on Amazon. Uh, they're fairly cheap. I think they're 14 to $18 a pair and they work great. I've actually cut over 11 balloons with a single pair of scissors and they have not worn out on me. So I'd highly recommend these. Additionally, what's nice about these scissors is they have this angle to them. So as you're cutting, and you'll see in the video I'm about to show you, it allows you to get the scissors underneath the pattern while still having your hand in a position that allows you to glide through the material. These scissors are awesome. A key to being able to use these scissors for a long time is also this Frisker scissor sharpener. It works great and it keeps your scissors nice and sharp as you cut balloons. It's also super easy to use. You just stick the scissors in and pull them through while you shut, close them with your hand. I highly recommend these two tools. Additionally, I'll show you some video now of how I cut. All right guys, so here's a little tutorial on how I cut my material. What I typically do is I lay out several sheets of material usually four to six sheets thick. I can go up to eight sheets thick with no issue, but four seems to work best. I'm in the middle here of cutting this panel currently. So what I do is I take my poster board pattern after I've laid out my material, I set it on the material itself, and I apply these weights. You can use any weight that you have sitting around, whether it's canned food, uh, glasses of water, or even just lift uh, your weights that you use to work out. Those work great as well, but just be sure you have plenty of weight on your pattern so it doesn't slide around. I've already cut two edges of this pattern, and what I do is I take my scissor sharpener and I sharpen my scissors, and since I'm on a carpet soft surface, I can get the scissors underneath the material and I can start to cut and I can slide easily through the material for a perfect edge. This seems to work extremely well for me and I've cut almost 13 balloons using this method and it's very quick and easy. So once I've cut the panel out, I go ahead and flip the material with the panel underneath it still over. So I'm now on the backside coated part of the material. Once I get to this step, I use a Sharpie to label each panel individually. I label it in each corner, top and bottom, with the panel number with a T or a B for top and bottom. This ensures that when you go to sew your balloon together, you keep all of your panels straight and you make sure you sew each one together correctly. It helps to avoid seam ripping and wasted time. So this is another device that I created to make cutting material much, much easier. This is essentially 
PVC material, a uh, three quarter inch, I believe, tube that fits easily in the tube of the material. What it allows me to do is set the material on this device and then easily pull out the material into long sheets at the layers and thickness that I need. So essentially I can pull long sheets of this material out, lay all my patterns on them and cut all of the panels in a single uh, set of material. It makes it much easier, much quicker. Uh, so I'd really suggest that you guys make something like this to make pulling your material easier. Now that you've seen the videos of how I prefer to cut material, keep in mind there's lots of different ways of doing this. I've seen multiple people cutting on tables using rotary cutters and also cutting on hard surfaces as well. Cutting is up to you. I've shown you what works best for me. I can cut most balloon patterns, depending on size and shape, in under 10 hours, which is pretty quick. Rotary cutters do make your life easier, but they may be a little tricky to get used to and they're more expensive. So you do what's right for you and your budget and your timeline, but most of all, what you're comfortable with doing. Now let's talk about what I prefer to use for sewing my balloons together. Like I said, I got started doing this hobby about two years ago and I had never sewn in my life. So I did a little bit of research on sewing machines that I felt were slightly heavy duty, but wouldn't break the bank that would hold up to sewing multiple balloons. I ended up buying this Singer 4411 heavy duty sewing machine. The difference between this and your average home sewing machine is that this has all metal components in the drive system. That's about it. You don't need anything fancy in terms of stitches or anything else on the machine. Personally, I do not do French felled seams on my balloons. You can if you prefer, but it's not necessary. I do face-to-face -face straight seams for all of my balloon seams, except for some zigzag seams on some of the finishing work. We'll go over those seams in the next video when we really get into the process of sewing. But for this video, I just wanted to show you the materials that I would recommend getting to sew your balloon. This Singer machine has been great. I've sewn over 11 balloons I believe now on this and I haven't had one issue. I do take it apart every once in a while and oil everything and use some compressed air to blow out the system when lint and other things start to build up but other than that this thing has been maintenance free and has been great. I got this on a Black Friday deal off of Amazon for $120. I think regularly right now at your local sewing store or still on Amazon you should be able to pick up this machine for between $160 and $200, and it's a great, great sewing machine. I'll provide a link uh, to the Amazon uh, website where you can purchase this machine now. So in addition to the sewing machine, I would highly recommend getting a walking foot. A walking foot is an attachment to your sewing machine that helps keep the two pieces of material that you're sewing together flowing evenly through the machine. On a typical sewing machine, it's going to come with a presser foot that has no drive dogs on it. So on a typical sewing machine, you have your smooth presser foot on top and your drive dogs on the bottom. Your material is then sandwiched between these pieces of material and pulled through as you sew. What a walking foot does is it provides an extra set of drive dogs that are actuated by the up and down motion of the machine on the top of the material. So this means that you have now have drive dogs or basically grips that grip both the top and the bottom piece of material and force it through the machine as you sew. This is really makes it a lot easier to sew ripstop nylon. Ripstop nylon is a very slippery material and it can be hard to keep the pieces of material even as you sew them through the sewing machine. We'll get a little bit more into this and I'll give you some close-ups of what this walking foot looks like and what it looks like as you're sewing the ripstop through the machine in the next video when we really delve into how to sew the panels together. In addition to a walking foot, I wanted to review the thread I use. <clears throat> I just use a cheap Sherlock polyester thread, nothing special. 
This thread is awesome. You can get it at your local Joann's or sewing shop, and it shouldn't be more than about four or five dollars for this entire 3,000 yard spool. From my experience, a typical balloon takes around 1,000 to 1,500 yards of thread, so you can almost sew two balloons with four dollars to five dollars worth of thread. Lastly, this is a great uh, tool that I bought. A traditional <coughs> sewing machine is only going to allow you to put a small spool of thread up on top of here as it feeds through. What this allows you to do is place your full spool of thread on, set it next to your sewing machine like so, and have your thread feed through the sewing machine. It makes it much, much easier, and you don't have to fill smaller spools of thread off your large spool to be able to use your machine. So I highly recommend getting one of these. You can also just make one of these from materials that you have laying around your house if you want. I just had a coupon and got this one for like five or 10 bucks, so it was worth it just to buy one. But I would highly recommend one of these. So thanks for tuning into this video. Now you know a little bit more about patterns. I've given you a little bit of help on converting the measurements. I've shown you how I prefer to cut material and I've reviewed what I think are key components to be able to be more successful at sewing. In the next video, we'll start sewing a balloon together. Currently, I'm working on a 3,500 cubic foot Cameron Viva bulbous balloon for a friend in our club. So that's the balloon I'm gonna be using as my example, but it'll sew just the same as any other balloon that you're putting together. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video series.